Welcome. In this video, I would like to offer a quick tip for the use of Evernote on multiple devices. Now, I work on a MacBook Pro on my desk, and I almost always carry my iPad with me, and it's really nice to be able to know that the information that I've inserted into my Evernote database on either device will be available on both devices as well as all the other computers on which I've uh, installed Evernote almost immediately. There are a couple of quirks to sharing data among multiple machines, but I'll show you how to work around them. Let's get started. Here I'm displaying a note in Evernote on my MacBook computer. You may recognize the text of this note from a prior video. But just to prove to you that I'm not pulling a wool over your eyes, I'm, yeah, I kind of mangled that metaphor, but I'm not trying to trick you. I'm going to insert some text in this note right here. And I'm just going to write practice text. I'll make it a little bit larger. And when I close this note and switch over to my iPad, you'll see this text becomes visible on my iPad. I paused the recording for a few minutes, but not because there was any difficulty with Evernote. I was actually having some difficulty in synchronizing my uh, display output from the iPad with my uh, MacBook so that I could record it. Once I solve that problem, I'm back here in Evernote. So you can see here, this window is a, um, is the note on my MacBook. Here's a copy of the note on my iPad. So this is, you can see this is a slightly different window. Now, this is not an instantaneous change. It takes a few minutes for the modifications made on one device to synchronize with Evernote servers and then to be downloaded to the other devices. But generally I find if I take meetings, uh, if I take notes while in a meeting, by the time I get back to my office, the notes will be accessible to me on my other devices. So it's measured in a couple of minutes, not a significantly long time, but it's not a perfect immediate synchronization between devices as you might have observed with online only programs such as Google Docs where changes made on one device are immediately visible on another device. Here, you have to allow some time for the synchronization back and forth with the Evernote server. But I can make changes here on my iPad. So let me flip to my head view so that I can prove to you I'm really working on an iPad. So here I have my iPad in front of me and I'm going to make some note changes. And now I'll let you see the changes I'm making. Uh, I'll write the word test and press enter. Now, in a few minutes, that change will be visible on my MacBook. However, I may have to close this window on my MacBook close this window, and I might even have to exit Evernote and reload Evernote. I found that if I exit the program and restart the program, all the synchronization always works perfectly. Ah, see, here it happened automatically, but it took uh, roughly a minute for the synchronization to occur. Most of the time, this is how it works but I have noticed a few quirks, especially when I'm attaching a fairly large PDF file or an audio recording, an MP3 file, or a uh, large photograph. Uh, 
Sometimes I have to exit the program and then restart the program. And that kind of triggers the resynchronization. I hope this quick demonstration gives you the confidence to use Evernote on multiple devices and to trust that the data you enter on one device into your Evernote account will be accessible on your other devices. So long as the devices are logged in to the same user account with Evernote and the, each devices, I'm sorry, each device has been connected to the internet and synchronized with the Evernote servers. In a future video, I'll show you how to share notes that you create with other Evernote users. I've done this in some classes when all students use Evernote. It makes it easy for me to put data in Evernote and immediately share it with them, allowing them, in some cases, to even edit the content themselves and then uh, whomever that note has been shared with will see the edits. It's kind of cool. It's not Google Docs or other direct online um, shared writing programs, but it, it is a really cool way to store data for later retrieval because of the advanced search functionality. I want to give a shout out to Gene Hoffman. In a prior video published a few weeks ago on the advanced search functions of Evernote, I described the use of descriptive searches. Gene wrote a comment and noted that when they use descriptive searches, Adobe PDF files are not always found or maybe the searches only for files with Adobe PDF files give um, inconsistent results. I explored Gene's problem and offered a response that uh, described the way I use advanced searching in Evernote rather than using the more simple descriptive searches. I want to give Gene props for challenging me, recognizing that they are having some trouble with descriptive searches, and I was able to replicate the same troubles. So, way to go, Gene. Thanks for writing a comment that made me rethink the advice that I offered. I appreciate it very much. Until next time, I wish you the very best with your use of Evernote, and I hope it helps your academic work. Bye for now.